Multiple updates coming in throughout the day on the situation in Ukraine. Not long before we went live, it was announced that Joe Biden would be deploying about 3,000 additional troops to Poland, which is certainly a move. Of course, he has also said multiple times already that they will not be entering into Ukraine either in advance of or in response to any sort of Russian aggression. So. I guess it's a thing you do as a sort of maneuver, a sort of bargaining thing. Um, we also know that a reporter for PBS News has been told that uh, by three different sources that the US believes that Putin has decided to attack. That is the conclusion they've come to. They didn't provide any information obviously uh, to that end, but that's what they say they're going on at this point. With all that said, we want you to take a look at a bit of video with Joe Biden being asked a question from Lester Holt. And look at how Lester Holt frames the situation. Given the, the size of this buildup, has the inertia reached a point where it's inevitable that they have no choice but to invade? Well, look, I've spoken with Putin. I've spoken with every NATO leader. I have brought them together like I think they've never been as coordinated in modern history, NATO leaders about what to do if Putin moves. The question is, he knows, he has to know that if he does, the entire circumstance for Russia changes worldwide, changes overnight. The cost to Russia, both in terms of reputational cost and economic cost to be profound. Okay, so much of what Biden said there isn't that dissimilar from the way that he's been talking about the situation for several weeks. But I am curious what both of you think about the way that Lester Holt framed that, that there potentially was no other choice at this point. Yeah, well, so look, I still don't know what the hell's going on here. We've been telling you guys the Ukrainians are not overly concerned about an invasion. That's because that's what their leaders are saying. Um, yet America says the war is going to start in 24 to 48 hours or you need to evacuate all Americans from there because it at least is likely enough to start in the next 24 or 48 hours. So I don't know if the US is lying on a mass scale here uh, so that Biden can then turn around and say, I averted the war and I'm an American hero and I'm just like JFK. Uh, but. In this context, John is right, and you're gonna see one more clip from Lester Holt. What's not helping is the media, right? Biden's position I'm I'm not entirely clear on, but the media's position I am clear on. Everything is pro-war, so everything is just framed that way. In this case, I mean, war is inevitable, right? I mean, the defense contractors should get a couple more <laughs> trillion dollars, right? I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a foregone conclusion, correct? So Emma, what's your take? Well, I mean, I, I think the media to an extent does take the, the State Department and the Pentagon's lead in this regard. And the chest puffing is, it, it seems performative, as you say. I mean, I hope that it's performative. I do not want a war. And I don't think the Biden administration wants it as well as they shouldn't, because obviously Russia is an immensely powerful actor on the global stage. And the consequences would be dire. He saw but said as much, though. We're not right. going to engage in a hot war. So, so then what is the purpose of this chest puffing except for chest puffing in and of itself? Now, to me, in terms of where the Biden administration's head is at, my hypothesis is that they perceive that they were looked at as weak when it comes to Afghanistan and withdrawing from Afghanistan. That's why he made that big show about assassinating the ISIS leader that nobody in the United States cares about uh, about a week ago, which ended up killing at least 13 civilians and they're blaming it on the ISIS leader blowing himself up. There's no way to take the United States at their word in that area because I mean, come on, how much of a track record do they have to have um, to make that clear? So I, I think this comes back to a theme with Biden. He believes and he's operating in this old school 1980s mindset that there is political currency to be had here when you look tough. When the reality is, is that everybody who's worried about Biden's tough posture in this area is on the right wing already. It's the same, I'm sure maybe we'll touch on this a bit when the uh, the, the way that the administration walked back the clean pipe proposal uh, for, for drug users. Mm -hmm. They're so terrified of this imaginary constituency that they think that they're gonna be able to gain. Um, when if people are outraged over these little things and the chest puffing on the foreign state, uh, on the international stage, or when it comes to the Biden administration initiating um, and, and incentivizing clean uh, drug programs and helping with harm reduction, 
they're already lost. Mm -hmm. And it feels like the Obama administration in in, in that regard uh, once over. Yeah, or it, twice over. One more reason to get a progressive in office, uh, seemingly every one of these you know, so-called centrists for all of their other problems also is just to their bones terrified mm -hmm. of everything of the other side, definitely of, of real attacks, of hypothetical attacks, of inevitable attacks that they can't realize are inevitable. Uh, on this situation, I've been trying to figure out the same thing. How likely is a conflict, if a conflict were to come, how soon is it to come? We had uh, on the Daily Report earlier this week, a Kiev based uh, journalist who said that uh, he believed it was more likely than is being presented by the Ukrainian government. In terms of how Biden is talking about this and the, the messaging from the US, which as Jank said, seems to be like you know, duck and cover, this thing is probably coming very soon. I think there, look, if you want to, there are certainly reasons to believe that. Not only the overall buildup, but the fact that it has increased quite a bit just in the past few days. They just a few days ago sent over some warships and a submarine. But from Biden's point of view, like it's almost irrelevant whether it happens immediately or not. His messaging works to cover his ass either way. If nothing happens, he looked strong, like he was taking it seriously. If something happens, it's definitely better of to have seemed prepared for it. And if your overall goal is to make sure that there's a reason, or at least what seems to be a reason to send a ton of money there to spend a bunch of money at defense contractors. Yeah, whether you think it's gonna happen or not, you're gonna wanna want make people believe that it could happen. I agree with Emma, I don't think that Biden like goes to sleep at night dreaming of a war with Russia. I don't, that seems like a crazy thing that a lot of people are saying. I don't know why he would want that. But then moving into Ukraine would also buttress military spending here. I don't think that means he wants it, but keeping tensions high and violence low, that definitely serves you know, sort of business as usual. So I think Emma made the most salient point here, and we got one I more tried. From, uh, from Lester Holt. Now, I like you, your use of the word buttress, but uh, to be fair, John, <laughs> I, I think her point was also more salient than mine. So <laughs> uh, Joe Biden is stuck in the 1980s. We've all said that, and I, I, it's funny you said 80s because I usually say 70s or 90s. But he's stuck <laughs> in time, right? And and guys, what was really popular thing to do in the 1980s? The Cold War. So, and seeming tough on foreign policy because you thought that was gonna get you a right leaning independence and some Republican votes. Now, fast forward to present day America, where Joe Biden has just woken up from his, what is those chambers where you're frozen? You would frozen know. Frozen in carbonite. Frozen in carbonite. Oh, well, I that's John. even better. I John to I'm it. not used to the yeah. competition. Geez. Okay, <laughs> okay. It could be a Bakta tank. Okay, it could be a Bakta tank. Uh, <laughs> uh, Biden fed. Um, <laughs> by the way, the least Boba Fett character of all time. <laughs> Boba Fett oh, is yeah. super strong. Biden's like, oh, I'm gonna show you how strong I am by caving to Republicans. Um, He's like a bureaucrat from the terrible new uh, Star Wars movies. That kind of senator, that person. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so. But so go back to, he wants to go back to the Cold War because he thinks that's a winning strategy. It's insane, okay? And then number two is this idea of, well, I'll appease the right wing. First of all, you don't look strong when you're trying to appease the other side. It doesn't matter how much you puff your chest, doesn't matter how many wars that you threaten, you look weak because you're begging them for support, right? And second of all, hello, Mr. Carbonite, in this decade, the right wing doesn't, the right wing voters, don't want more war. Trump ran against the endless wars, and it helped him in the primaries, in the Republican primaries. But but Joe Biden's like, me tough on ISIS, me tough on Russia, that will get right wing votes. <laughs> no, it won't. And by the way, look, that's ISIS and Russia both happening when Biden's polling numbers are disastrous is not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. So they're pivoting to foreign policy. So is Russia starting it by bringing the troops to the border? Or are we starting it by saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna put Ukraine in our military alliance and dare you to do something about it because we're pivoting to foreign policy to make Biden look tough. I don't know, but it doesn't look good for the Biden team and none of this is gonna work politically. Last poll out, when they ask, what has Biden done for you? I mean, nothing is, is really harsh, right? I mean, he did pass two, Bills, etc., including the 
all the checks that went out. 56% of Americans said nothing. He's done nothing for them. 56, that's not, Republicans are about 40% of the country now. That means there's a ton of independents and Democrats saying he hasn't done anything. And threatening a war with Russia isn't gonna help him with that at all, but back to the media. Yeah, Oh well then let's make sure that we fit this in. Lester Hill also asked Joe Biden about the situation in Afghanistan, the pullout, and let's take a look at that. That army report, an investigative report that's come out about the lead up to the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It, it interviewed many military officials and officers who said the administration ignored the handwriting on the wall. Uh, another described trying to get folks in the embassy ready to evacuate, encountering uh, you know, people who are in, essentially in denial of, of this situation. Does any of that ring true to you? No. No. That's not what I was told. That you were told that the US administration officials were prepared, they knew it was time to get out? No, what I was told, no one told me that, look, there was no good time to get out. But if we had not gotten out, they acknowledged that we would have had to put a hell of a lot more troops back in. It wasn't just 2,000, 4,000. We would have to significantly increase the number of troops, and we were back in this, this war of attrition. And, it, and there was no way we were ever going to unite. Ukraine, I mean, excuse me, Iraq, Afghanistan, no way that was going to happen. And so this is a much wiser thing to do. I just want to clarify, are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true? I'm rejecting them. Yeah, look, to whatever extent he individually made the pullout worse, he should be blamed for that. But let's also not pretend that whenever it happened, if it was today, five years ago, 15 years in the future, the media was going to whine about it. They supported it going in. They do not want us pulling out of conflicts like this. So look, I think there's a lot of legitimate reasons to attack Joe Biden. You can even find a bunch in the context of Afghanistan. But they're just, they're salty about the fact that the war finally ended. Well, I'll, I'll find a way to criticize him with Afghanistan, which is currently, as the story comes out today, $7 billion in assets that have been frozen in the United States of the Afghan government. Right now, the issue is in, in Afghanistan, they have a currency problem. And there is just not enough money to go around because uh, the central bank there just doesn't have the funds. The country has $20 billion in GDP, that is Afghanistan. It's not a wealthy country by any means. $7 billion, even if it's going to the Taliban, which we knew would take over by the way, so we can't clutch our pearls and say we can't bring money to give money to them. Maybe they'll shave off some off the top, but this is Afghanistan's money and it needs to go to people who are on the brink of famine right now. And the Biden administration is splitting it in half, apparently giving some of it to 9-11 victims as opposed to just, I don't know, the federal government paying 9-11 victims, yeah. that could be great. Um, and, and so that's a cr valid critique here. But he doesn't really go on the offensive to talk about why the Afghanistan withdrawal was the right thing to do. Because really all he wanted to do was wipe his hands clean of it and walk away, not do the hard work of repairing there. Um, but as you say, Jank, the media's framing of it, they're invested in not even just American might because America maintaining some sort of power would mean that we would withdraw from some of these endless conflicts and preserve the country. No, they're maintained in the perception of American might, in the pageantry of it. Mm -hmm. And it seeps through every question, whether it's about Ukraine, Russia, Afghanistan, Iraq, whatever the case may be. That's all they want to portray is American strength, even if it's just surface level portrayal. Yeah, and so real quick on all of those. First of all, us taking Afghanistan's money is basically theft. And and why are we doing that? Because Biden doesn't want the right wing to yell at him and say you're giving it to the Taliban. Okay, don't yeah. give it to the Taliban, Do give it to an NGO that gives it to the people of Afghanistan because it's not our money, it's their money. Uh, but again, a desperate, desperate to appease a right wing that he cannot possibly appease. But to give credit to Biden on that answer, yes, he looks dazed and confused, badly so. But his answer is correct on the substance. No, that they were no matter when we withdrew from Afghanistan, everybody was going to criticize. So that was one of the few things that Biden did really well, and get always credit where credit is due, and be honest, right? Yeah. But to me, the most salient point of this exchange is. 
No matter what happens, Lester Holt, NBC News, and all the mainstream media is always for war. Afghanistan, we should have stayed. Russia, it's inevitable. War, 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 always inevitable, always forever. And by the way, did he ask this, the most important question? How are we gonna pay for that? I mean, I hear it every time when it's healthcare for you guys or higher wages for you guys or anything that helps you guys. The Lester Holtz of the world scream in fury, how are you going to pay for that? And now he's like saying, "Oh yeah, we should start World War III, right? It's inevitable. And you should have stayed in Afghanistan for another 20 years. How are you gonna pay for that? Oh, who cares? That's our advertisers, we're all making money. So I'm sick of the yeah. corporate media and the wars that they helped to start. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.